Hey, Tim Destasio here. It's Psychrometric Saturday. We've been talking a lot about moisture over the last several episodes, uh, and we're going to continue talking about moisture, but I want to come back to dew point. Again, dew point and grains of moisture both read absolute humidity. So that's the actual moisture in the air, just like if we read the actual amount of moisture in this container at three cups, that is the absolute humidity of that container of water. The dew point and the grains, this horizontal line here, wherever it is, represents how much actual absolute moisture is in the air. The higher we are in the chart, it's just like having more liquid in the container, the more moisture is in the air. The lower we are in the chart, the less moisture is in the air. But let's talk about what dew point actually is, because I want you to use dew point in your diagnosis. I don't like going to relative humidity. We haven't even talked about relative humidity yet in this series, because that's how far down the road that I want you to be before you start thinking about relative humidity. Dew point is really the better way to think about moisture and humidity problems. And I'm going to talk about today what dew point actually is. And we've covered it before, but dew point explains to us the temperature that if the air gets any cooler than that temperature, it'll start releasing moisture in the form of condensation. So let's bring this to something that we've all seen. It is a humid day outside. Let's say it's 75 degrees outside and the humidity is way up here. I don't really care where it is, just somewhere up there. And we have a nice cold drink that we just poured out of something that was kept in the refrigerator. So the liquid temperature and soon the container that we're holding it in, the glass, becomes 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, why does that glass start to sweat and water and condensation starts dripping down the glass and forming a puddle under it? Why does that happen? Well, that's because the dew point of the air, let's say the dew point is over here above 70 degrees, that means that anything under 70 degrees is going to make the air sweat. And so obviously this is way under 70 degrees, it's 35 degrees, so that warm moist air hits that 35 degree surface, that air gets cold all of a sudden, and now it can't hold as much moisture, and the moisture starts falling out of the air in the form of condensation. That's something we've all seen. Now let's take that to HVAC. Same exact thing happens in the air conditioning process. Our evaporator coil has an average temperature of around 40 degrees if the system is performing very, very well. So again, if we bring in air from the space, now the air from the space hopefully is not as humid as we just used, maybe it's only 75 degrees and 60 degrees dew point. But anything that the air comes in contact with that's under the dew point, in this case 60 degrees, the moisture in the air will start falling out of it in the form of condensation. So here, our evaporator coil, we want it to be around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously that's well under 60 degrees. That's why water droplets form on that coil. It eventually runs down to the pan, eventually gets drained out. And that is exactly what condensation is. It is the moisture that has fallen out of the air because that moisture has hit the cold surface of the evaporator. We're gonna talk a little bit more about diagnosing using dew point in our next episode when we talk about home diagnosis and more building science stuff. So stay tuned next time for Psychrometric Saturday.